Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's some pressure. Okay. So let's go. So in this work, we address the following question. What's a programming language uh, mathematically? Uh, so in this contribution, we introduce the notion of transition models. I'm sorry, this oh. doesn't work like this. But... And this cooperation corresponds to the bias. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. Tamo seemed to be unhappy. No, no. No? OK, so let's continue. So we introduced transition monads as a notion of programming language. And uh, in the second stage, um, a notion of signature for automatically generating transition monads. Uh, so this work uh, generalizes the reduction monads of Arens and his colleagues in Papo this year. It's a mild generalization, but it brings in a, new, a whole lot of new examples. So let me uh, list them. So we have the lambda bar mu calculus, uh, call by value, big step lambda calculus, simply typed also, positive G source specifications from format theory, the pi calculus in its uh, reduction system form, and the differential lambda calculus. Okay, so some related work. As I said, so generalization of the uh, reduction monads except that those, so in, in what sense is it a generalization? Reduction monads are untyped and couldn't accommodate the core by value lambda calculus. Another um, approach is the mathematical operational semantics of Turian Plotkin, which has been deeply developed in particular um, in the direction of quantitative semantics, but um, to date um, kind of fails to deal with high order languages. So only Marco Perez's thesis has some start on this. And finally, uh, there are some categorical accounts of rewriting in the present variable binding, but uh, they only deal with congruent transitions. So con transitions that are stable under any contexts. So weak reduction, for example, is out of reach. So in this talk, I'm going to first define transition monads and then uh, sketch the, the notion of signature that we have, and then go through some examples. So the basic components of a transition monad uh, are as follows. So we have first a monad. So that's, let's start with the example of core by value lambda calculus. So we have first the monad of values. Uh, so why, why is that a monad? Because, well, variables are values. And furthermore, um, there's a substitution that takes a value and replaces variables uh, in there with other values. And then terms, general terms, which may be uh, more than values, um, also enjoy a, a substitution, which goes from terms to terms. So you replace values, you, you're sorry, you replace variables by values. And that's what we call a module over the mon monad of values. And similarly, reductions or transitions um, are stable under substitution, so they form a module over the monad. So generalizing, um, we define a transition monad to consist of a monad T together with three uh, modules of this monad, M1, M2, and trans, and, and two uh, module morphisms between them, just as we did for uh, the core value on the calculus. So you see, uh, in the particular example of core value on the calculus, the first module here is the, the term module, but the second module is trivial, it's just the, the monad T. And let's mention that reduction monads uh, are exactly the particular case where M1 and M2 are both uh, the monad itself viewed as a module over itself. So it's like reductions relate terms to terms and, and that's all. And also we accommodate other categories than sets. So that's, that's in sets. Right. So what's a module in general? Uh, given a monad T, it's a functor M 
together with the natural transformation from M composed with T to M, which I call rho there. And that's, uh, sorry, together with uh, some coherence laws. So this natural transformation accounts for substitution of elements in M by elements in T, more or less. So how does that work? You take any small m in an m of x, which you think of as a term in, in the language of m with three variables in x. Then a substitution is a, is a map from x to ty there. So to each variable in x, you so associate a term in t in the sense of the language of t with three variables in y. And in order to perform the substitution of m with uh, this little t here, you apply a big M to this morphism there. And then you apply rho to, to reduce MT to M itself. So you get further to M. And you think of this as mapping little m to M substituted according to T. So in, in one sentence, a module is a language uh, which admits substitution by elements of the monad. So now we have a definition of programming languages as transition monads, but how can we construct useful transition monads from simple specifications? So we provide a, a notion of, of signature, which we call simple specification, and it's up to you to judge this, together with a, an existent theorem saying that uh, given a signature, there's, a, there's one transition monad maxim the, matching this specification. So this goes in three levels. We first specify the monad, then we specify the modules, M1 and M2, by operations plus equations. These two uh, levels follow existing work by Fioran Orr and by Arens and his colleagues. And the third level uh, is about the transition structure. So the, it, it essentially a signature, the third component of a signature consists of uh, transition rules, essentially, but formalized, uh, like defined mathematically, semantically. So here are a few examples. Um, the first four are about the core by name on the calculus. So they are in fact example of, examples of signature for reduction monads, but still they're probably uh, good to go through at first. And then I'm going to explain the signature for the modules uh, for Corbett value lambda calculus, and then go through the modules and monad for differential lambda calculus. So uh, here's the big picture for Corbett name lambda calculus. The monad is specified by two operations, one for application, one for abstraction. And then the modules are simple, they're just uh, T itself. And finally, we define the transition structure by the beta rule plus the congruences that we want to consider. So the monad. Um, the idea is that the syntax is generated by uh, two module morphisms, application from t cross t to t, because it's only a binary operation, and abstraction from t prime to t where T prime is the module of terms depend, depending on one fresh variable. Right, and that model's binding. So the, the fresh variable is the, the bound variable. And also uh, in the syntax, you also have variables, but you don't need to specify them because you have a monad. So the, the unit provides the variables. Okay. And the fact that I said that these two should be module morphisms essentially specifies the behavior of substitution with respect to the constructors. So for example, um, they say that the, the substitution goes deeper into applications as, as here. Right, and this is all done in, in previous work. 
So how do we specify, for example, the left congruence rule for application? So if T1 reduces to T2, then T1 applied to U reduces to T2 applied to U. Well, we interpret the transition rule as follows. So we first infer the, the meter variables, so the parameters for the rule. Here, there are three T1, T2, and U, which are three plain terms. So it's, we take as meta variable module, V here, uh, T uh, times T times T. And then we model the premise and conclusion. Here's, there's just one premise. So it's, it's easy. It's, it's a mo uh, module morphism from V, the meta variables, to uh, M1, M1 times M2, in this case, T times T. And so it's the fact that um, the premise relates T1 to T2. So we just take the two projections there. And similarly, we specify the conclusion, or sorry, we interpret the conclusion as a module morphism from V to M1 times M2 by mapping T1, T2, U to uh, the two relevant applications there. Okay. Now the rule for reduction under lambda, the Xi rule. This time, uh, the meta variables depend on an additional fresh variable. So the meta variable module V is T prime times T prime. And the premise is the trivial, uh, the identity module morphism mapping T1, T2 to itself. While the conclusion maps T1, T2 to uh, the lambda abstractions. Okay. Now the, uh, the modules M1, M2 for core value lambda calculus. So remember, in core value lambda calculus, the monad is just a monad of values. And the, uh, the idea, in, for example, in, in big step semantics, the idea is that the uh, evaluation relation should relate terms on the one hand to values on the other hand. That's what's written here. Um, but the thing is, we can specify terms uh, by saying that they're either values or applications. So we only need one constructor for terms. And so in fact, terms are, are essentially obtained that the terms functor there is the composite of the value monad with the binary tree functors. So bin tree of X is the set of binary trees with leaves in X. And well, in fact, by definition of a transition monad, if you look into the paper, uh, the modules are only allowed to be of the shape uh, S, uh, S uh, composed with T, so free modules essentially. So in this case, what we need to specify is the functor of binary trees. And we do that by just one, specifying just one binary operation for the for application. So there's a similar mechanism uh, to modules over monads for specifying functors, which is detailed in the paper. Right. So for uh, differential lambda calculus, DRC means it's a bit rough here, maybe. Differential lambda calculus. Um, th the modules are, again, not quite uh, the monad itself, um, because in the differential of the calculus, a term reduces to a multi-term, which is essentially a form of sum of terms. So we can do just as before uh, by composing the monad with the functor for formal sums. And this is specified by a constant zero binary operation together with uh, variables and uh, equations for commutativity, associativity, and unitarity. So it's a bit like uh, the previous slide. And finally, the monad for uh, differential on the calculus, it's, it's not particularly difficult. It's a variant of the one for lambda calculus, where the pecu peculiarity is that application uh, takes a term and a multi-term for arguments. 
So instead of having a binary operation, application is just has of this type here. So T times former sums composed with T arrow T. And also you have differential application, which is just binary operation. Okay. So a bit of further work. There's a, there's a kind of trick here um, in that the notion of model, uh, so yeah, sorry. The approach is, is in the spirit of initial semantics in the sense that the signatures that we introduce are meant to specify an initial object in a category. But the thing is that the, the category of models that we use here is a bit uh, less general, a bit smaller than what uh, Arendt and his colleagues uh, used to have. So when you have more models, your, your induction principle is stronger because it applies to uh, more, more settings. So here we have a less general recursion principle. On the other hand, why do we do this? It's because it allows us to uh, have easier signatures. So further work is to uh, widen the notion of model and keeping a um, tractable notion of signature. So why do we do that? Well, th the point is that um, wh what Arendt and his colleagues do is that in the third component, instead of uh, providing module morphisms for the, uh, the specified monad and the specified modules, they, uh, they ask for module morphisms for any model of the first component of the signature. So any model of the syntax and any model of the signature for modules. And for example, it's important in our signature for differential lambda calculus to be able to rely on the fact that it, these are precisely the initial monad and modules. Because yeah, the, the point is that they have, the, the rules rely on intermediate notions, intermediate notions, uh, which are defined by induction on syntax. And these are not available in other models. So in conclusion, we have a mild generalization of reduction monads, which uh, uh, lead to a new notion of programming language, transition monads. They consist of a monad T and module morphisms um, of the shape on the right there. Uh, we also introduce a notion specification for transition monads in three layers, which allows uh, an easy interpretation of uh, transition rules in the usual format. And finally, we cover uh, a lot of new examples, lambda bar, mu calculus in the paper, co by value lambda calculus, which I sketched here briefly, the pi calculus, differential lambda calculus, and positive GSOS specification. I'll add a plus here to be entirely correct. That's all, thanks for your attention. I can't hear anybody. Oh, Tomo, you, you got muted in the beginning when you, you tried to, to stream the video. Am I the only one not hearing you? Uh -huh. It's interesting. Ah, hello. Ah, yeah. Okay, I see Marco's Marco's question now. Uh, yes, I can repeat why I have why well we have less general models. It's because in in the component of signatures for transitions. Uh, we assume that we fix the, the modad and modules to be the initial ones for the first two components. I don't know if you're hearing me, Marco. We hear you very well, Tom. Okay, good. So does that answer the question? Okay, good, thanks.
Other questions? Can someone read out Lionel's question? I, you, you can't hear me. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, now, now I can we, hear we you. Do hear you. Now, I don't know what it is. There must be enormous delays. I, I'm sorry. I wanted to thank for the for the presentation, <laughs> and I spoke and I was unmuted. Anyway, so there is also a question of Lionel Vo. Can your framework accommodate other kinds of superposition? I mean, other than formal sums. Uh, Uh, what is an example of other kinds of superpositions? Let me. I mean, like, uh, I mean, thanks. I think I I can talk. Yes, you can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, uh, like probabilistic superpositions are uh, more generally uh, linear combinations with uh, any kind of coefficients. And what is peculiar to the algebraic lambda calculus and differential lambda calculus is that in this case. The, the extension of the rewriting steps from simple terms to sums of terms involves some kind of splitting. I, I mean, you are not with you are not working on free sums, and and you can somehow uh, rewrite one simple term. You, you you cut it in half and reduce one half. So uh, does this uh, can this be represented in your framework? That's an amazing question. Thank you. I think it's future work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Certainly, the uh, linear combinations are maybe specified as a module, but the yeah, but, but, well, but the my point is that yeah, yeah, my point is that uh, it, it seems to me that the way you 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 extend the the the, the reduction relation from the, the, the base case to the monad. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's not very, very clear even for me, but um, I, I'm not sure it can fit your framework really transparently. Hmm. I, I'm not sure we speak about extending the reduction relation to multi-terms. Uh, okay, you, you ah. Okay, so you can represent the, the reduction from simple terms to multi-terms, but, uh, yes. but the iterated relation needs to some kind of extension. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm saying not we saying can't. We can't. <laughs> okay. But I uh, haven't tried. tried. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Can you hear me still? Uh, we can. Very good. I can't see any other questions right now. I, I, I had a question myself. So now you have a nice way to um, to state operational semantics for 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 languages like um, call by value lambda calculus, where you have these different <laughs> syntactic categories of terms and values, for example. Um, but then, now that the framework has been set up. Can you imagine some ways of doing some sort of meta theory of any of these small step semantics or big step for that matter in this framework? Uh, would that be possible at all? Like prove something about the reduction relation in, uh, in, uh, in call by value lambda calculus. Um, well, I suppose that is not an interesting exercise for call by value lambda calculus because you do it uh, you uh, you do it by hand in this particular instance, but something something general about um, I don't know structural operation sem semantics of this or another class that they would have these or those properties. Uh. Yeah, so I, I must start with uh, by thanking you warmly for asking this question because it gives me an opportunity for advertising my other paper with Ambroise at Leaks uh, because uh -huh. it just it does exactly that. Uh, the point is that it uses a more primitive, so less expressive notion of signature, mm -hmm. but it goes, uh, it, it proves an abstract congruence of bisimilarity theorem using Howe's method, so an abstract version of Howe's method. But we don't, we don't know yet how to do this with this um, sophisticated signatures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at least in this next paper, you cover like 
you, you cover several languages and semantics at once with this. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't have uh, many examples worked out. Uh huh. But uh, it's it it is an abstract theorem. We don't mm -hmm. yet know how general it is. In terms of number of instances that are meaningful. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. Any other question here? Um, I don't see for them. I could ask another one about the paper. So we have these two definitions, one that you call modular and the other one based on, uh, that, that is a bit more compact, but uses relative monads. Is it just immediately unpacking the definitions that shows that they are the same or is there anything interesting happening there at all to, uh, to see that they do capture exactly the same thing? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I first did a proof that went over several pages, which was very conceptual. But then Ambroise deleted it and said it was just trivial when you unpack definitions. So he's probably right. OK, but the, it's, <laughs> so you say, <laughs> if there is no page limit, then it takes several pages to explain it properly. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I'm, I'm saying it, I'm just too fond of categorical proofs sometimes. OK, OK, I see. Okay. And Ambroise is much more efficient. Okay. That's the same question that Lionel is asking. Oh, Lionel just, yeah, he repeats the same question. Uh, maybe this was posted earlier, but we can see it now. Uh. <laughs> okay. Any, anything else? Okay, if not, then I, then I thank you all for participating here at this late hour of the day, at least in Europe. <laughs>